This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecki is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Gwilda Wiecki's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Science of Magic or endorsed in any manner by Gwilda Wiecki, Relmar McConnell Media Company, its affiliated networks, stations, or employees. Welcome to the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, a program dedicated to uncovering the unified nature of reality and humanity's ever-evolving place as truly galactic beings. For more information on the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, visit us online at www.thescienceofmagic.net. Hello, dear friends, and welcome to the Science of Magic, a program combining the science and magic of today's leading topics to co-create new solutions and promote evolutionary thinking. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring incorporation versus invalidation. Since the late 18th and 19th centuries, there's been a battle raging between allopathic and homeopathic medicine. At that time in history, Traditional allopathic or so-called mainstream medicine used methods like bloodletting, purging, and administering complex mixtures. These treatments often worsen symptoms, sometimes proving fatal. On the other hand, homeopathy did no harm, but was considered by allopathic medical practitioners to be ineffectual for treating any condition. It was, and still is considered by many, to be no more effective than the placebo. It was hypothesized that the seemingly superior results of homeopathic medicine over allopathic during epidemics was not because of the effectiveness of homeopathy, but rather the damaging results of allopathic treatments of the time. Homeopathy utilizes the concept of like cures like, working at the esoteric level rather than the physical. It holds to the idea of a spiritual or energetic component to illness known as miasms which are often often driven deeper into the body when allopathic procedures are used to treat symptoms rather than the cause. If allopathic medicine treats at the physical level, while homeopathic medicine treats at the energetic or spiritual one, it would appear to be a place where science and magic meet. It might very well be time to consider incorporation versus invalidation of concepts and opinions. With us this hour to explore this intriguing and controversial topic is Dr. Judith reichenberg Ullman, a licensed naturopathic physician of 34 years, board certified in homeopathy. She's the author of Whole Woman Homeopathy, and with her husband, Dr. Robert Ullman, co-authored many other books on homeopathy, as well as Mystics, Masters, Saints, and Sages, Stories of Enlightenment. She's passionate about helping people transform their lives with homeopathy. She practices at the Northwest Center for Homeopathic Medicine in Edmonds, Washington, and via Skype. Judith co-leads the Dance of Universal Peace and has been involved in yoga, meditation, and spiritual pursuits since her early 20s. Her website is healthyhomeopathy.com. Judith, thank you so much for joining us on The Science of Magic. Thank you. You are very articulate. That was one of the best summaries I think I've ever heard. Oh, well, gosh, what a compliment. Thank you so much. Well, let's hear it from you. What is homeopathy? Homeopathy is uh, really, for me, I would say the most elegant and and um, unified and comprehensive form of medicine that I know. And I'll say right off that there are times when conventional medicine and homeopathic medicine marry very, very nicely. You know, I'm... Um, 
I'm 69 now, and uh, I am very grateful to conventional medicine when I have needed it. Homeopathy is unique in that it's based on the idea of like cures like, and that goes way back, that concept to Hippocrates, which is about 500 B.C. And the idea is that there is one particular substance from nature that treats the whole person. And uh, another uh, really unusual thing about homeopathy is um, it's very gentle, it's non-toxic, yet highly effective. In India, for example, homeopathy is used in hospitals uh, in conjunction uh, with conventional medicine. And uh, so I think that, uh, that homeopathy is really ideal for women and uh, children and really people of all ages, even for pets. It's safe in this era where there's so much... Um, toxicity and so much uh, danger from medicine, it's the safest medicine you'll ever find. So where did it originate, actually? Was was that what you just said? The... It originated in Germany with a doctor named Samuel Hahnemann, who was quite brilliant, who was a medical translator and also a physician. And he wanted we're to going, understand. We're going to have, I'm sorry, we're going to have to take a quick break. It's time for okay. a commercial break. Judith right. and I will return shortly, so don't go away. You're listening to The Science of Magic. Our current episodes are aired daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net. In service to our listeners, prior innovative episodes can be accessed free of charge on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit us at www. XZBN.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi Fi, you can still listen to the X Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X Minus One, Dimension X. Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? 
Wire crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere. Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour, Dr. Judith reichenberg Ullman, is a licensed naturopathic physician. Her website, healthyhomeopathy.com. Judith, we were just talking about um, where um, homeopathy originated, and you were saying it was in Germany? It was in Germany, and a doctor and medical translator named Samuel Hahnemann really wanted to find out for himself what healing was all about and really the mechanism of healing and, and how people with chronic predispositions to illness could remove those predispositions. And so through a, he actually began with, uh, with um, Peruvian bark, which, because he knew that's uh, what quinine was made from, and quinine uh, cured malaria. And so he did an experiment himself, and he took the bark, and he found out that by taking the bark repeatedly, he actually developed the very symptoms of malaria which are a relapsing fever and sweats and chills. And, and he deduced from that and through many, much, much experimentation afterwards called provings, how really uh, healing worked and, uh, and developed the system of homeopathy. So it he, like... he created a system, you know, from something that seemed really to not make sense. And that system, now there's over 3,500 homeopathic medicines, and it's used throughout the world. And, uh, and so he, he, he really developed that into a, a very coherent system that has lasted until this day and become more and more popular throughout the world. The... Um... Some pe- some people view it the body when it starts to um, show symptoms is actually the body's way or the immune system's way of fighting off the disease. So did stimulating those symptoms actually gear the body up to protect itself? It's not quite like that. It's really matching the energy of the individual organism with the energy of a substance in nature. In other words, every substance in nature, if taken repeatedly causes a certain set of symptoms and if prepared in a homeopathic way that same substance will relieve those symptoms the one of the easiest examples is bee honey bee which is apis in homeopathy and if you think of getting a bee sting it's hot it's red it's stinging there's swelling and so you can use home homeopathic honey bee apis for a variety of conditions that have those same symptoms. It may be uh, a bee sting. It may be a rash with a lot of swelling. It may be a bladder infection that feels the same way with heat and stinging and swelling. It may be arthritis 
In other words, what we're looking for is matching those same symptoms that a person has or an animal has for that matter with a substance that, if taken repeatedly, causes those same symptoms. It's, it's really a, a, a pretty easy principle. Yet um, it's not herbology. How are, how are homeopathic remedies made? Well, there are over 3,500 homeopathic remedies. It, they come from the animal, the plant, and the mineral kingdoms. And first, uh, that substance is, you know, the raw substance is taken, and it's made with alcohol into what's called a tincture, a mother tincture. And then that is diluted many, many times. And that's what makes it into a homeopathic medicine. It's that process of serial dilution. And each time there's a dilution, there's what's called a succussion, which is shaking. It's still not really understood very well how that succussion works, but that is what appears to energize the substance. I, I feel quite sure that the mechanism of homeopathy will be scientifically understood. There's, there's been um, nuclear magnetic resonance. There's been many different kinds of interpretations, but uh, I think the energetic mechanism will be fully understood. It sounds like um, you're reducing it down to where it's so refined it's more on the energetic rather than the physical where it treats. Do you consider it to be an energetic medicine? Absolutely, I consider it to be energy medicine, but it does treat on the physical, the mental, and emotional levels. It's a good question whether it treats on the spiritual level. I, I don't say per se that it treats on the spiritual level, but uh, you know, certainly if you're talking about physical, mental, and emotional, it has implications uh, on, on well-being on all levels. You know, immunizations work by infecting a person with a small por portion of a disease uh, to arm the immune system against illness. So how is that different exactly than the home homeopathic approach? Well, immunization, you can say that it works on that like, cures like principle, but it's very, it's just one particular uh, organism and it's one particular condition. It's very, very different than matching the whole person to one substance in nature. I mean, we're really talking about the whole person, physical, mental, and emotional. And when I have a chance to share a little bit about cases, it's absolutely fascinating how often the, the substance, the medicine homeopathically that someone needs goes way back to their childhood. And it's so how, like uh, unraveling a puzzle. It's absolutely fascinating. Yeah, you, you just introduced the next question for me. Is how do you figure out what to give a person? Well, it's through an interview process. Uh, I'll give a perfect example. Yesterday, son, eight-year-old. I had already helped the mom, uh, who's a very responsible working mom, and uh, has a, a home partner, so she she brings home the bread, so to speak. And she uh, helped, was able to help her very quickly, believe it or not, with psoriasis. And she, so she brought in her 8-year-old. And it was absolutely fascinating because she told me how the 8-year-old uh, had these obsessive, compulsive um, tendencies and how from the time she was a, an infant, she screamed. And she uh, she clung to her mother, and she had to be held all the time, or she would scream. So as the interview unfolded, first with the mom, and then I talked to the child altogether. It was an hour and a half. It became really evident. It's a highly sensitive child, very very sensitive to pain. And she would say to her mom, "I'm teething." Now, what eight year old do you know? that would say that and she had to wear her clothes a certain way because they didn't feel right and so it became clear that she actually needed homeopathic chamomile everybody knows pretty much what chamomile is and it is a big teething remedy and uh, but it's for that kind of sensitivity and amazingly enough it's for someone who feels really alone and abandoned and they don't have the really the contact and the support with the, with the mother or with the person that they want. And she actually described that, how she was really sorry that her mom went to the office and she really wanted to cuddle with her. But what's most amazing, I think, is it all fit together as it should uh, in homeopathy. And then she said, well, isn't that funny? Because chamomile tea is something I drink all the time. 
And uh, before the pregnancy, during the pregnancy, I drank chamomile tea. And furthermore, I had a Central American nanny, and that woman used chamomile all the time for the kids. Hmm. You know, many sources indicate that homeopathy has never been scientifically proven um, to be effective. Is is that true? No, no, no. There are many, many studies uh, that uh, that you know, that prove the effectiveness of homeopathy. It's not in the interest of uh, of conventional uh, pharmaceutical companies to really uh, have people understand how effective homeopathy is. But it's hard for homeopathy to get funding. And so that's one of the reasons that there's been discrimination against homeopathy in scientific journals. But, no, there are many studies. That, how does homeopathy... Uh, How does homeopathy compare with allopathic medicine, and when do you know which one you need? Well, (laughs) that's a good idea, and as I mentioned, they can go hand in hand. Allopathic medicine puts people into diagnostic categories or boxes and then works on the principle of antibiotics or anti-inflammatories. In other words, the idea is to uh, that there's a struggle going on between the body and the illness, whereas homeopathy is entirely different. The idea is that there is one remedy that working with the body to stimulate the vital force, to stimulate the immune system, will bring that uh, organism into equilibrium. It's, it's a very different point of view, although they can work together. Well, it sounds like the um, homeopathy is very dependent upon the uh, skill of the practitioner. What happens when you get a practitioner that's not as accurate as as you're talking? What happens then? Well, there's various levels of homeopathy, okay? We wrote a book called Homeopathic Self-Care 20 years ago, and for first aid and acute conditions, it is very easy for almost anyone to treat himself, herself, the family for acute conditions, sore throats, flus, Uh, acute diarrhea, bladder infections, uh, on and on. It's when you're talking about chronic problems, which we call constitutional prescribing, that you need to go to somebody with experience who can really evaluate the whole person and uh, and find the one remedy in uh, among over 3,000 that's just right for that person. And that's when there will, will be fabulous results. There's a misconception. If you talk to people, they'll say, yeah, homeopathy is natural. Homeopathy is safe, but it's slow. That is not true. (laughs) But that's because uh, people are not finding the exact match. Oh, so are you saying uh, the part that's not true is not that it's not safe? Is it dangerous? No, no, no. It's very safe. It's very natural. It is not slow acting. As a matter of fact, if you have a fever... If you have pain from an acute bladder infection, you take the right remedy and within 15 minutes to half an hour, you should notice a difference. When I see somebody for a chronic problem, I see them again in six weeks, they should notice within uh, 10 days, two weeks, three weeks, they will notice a difference that will indicate whether the remedy is working or not. It is not slow. So you send, what do you send them home with? Well, I send them home with a homeopathic medicine that may be in the form of pellets. It may be in the form of a liquid. It may be just something to take once, a single dose, if it's a high-potency remedy, because uh, stronger, uh, the weaker (laughs) the homeopathic remedy, the shorter it lasts. The more diluted, the stronger, which is counterintuitive, and the longer it lasts. So I will send them home with one specific homeopathic Remedy may be just a single dose. It may be something to take every day. You said and then something- they need to report to me in six weeks. We do an appointment in six weeks. And if it's the right remedy, they will definitely notice a difference. I don't have to convince that person that the remedy is correct. Judith, have there times that somebody comes to you and you go, well, you better refer this one out because it's, it's too far down the pike for homeopathy at this point? Yeah, of course. You know, if somebody calls and they have metastatic cancer, or if uh, there, yeah, there are there are a number of times that I say I really don't think I'm the person. Often it is when it's somebody with with cancer that's advanced. Yeah, there's nothing like nothing like allopathic when you need it, right? 
Well, yeah, and there are people, particularly in India, where the climate is a lot different uh, politically, who who do treat a variety of conditions that I would not treat here. Got it. Well, it's time for another short pause. Judith and I will return to our discussion on the other side of this break, so don't go away. We're coming to you through the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't miss the other fine shows and hosts on xzbn.net. You're listening to The Science of Magic. Your resource for creative solutions in a changing world, thescienceofmagic.net. are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss shamanic counselor and indigenously trained dream decoder Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influenced her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earthwalk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today. Know the name, know the person. Or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen.
Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, a place where magic and science come together to promote enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Dr. Judith reichenberg Ullman. She's the author of numerous books, including Whole Woman Homeopathy. Her website, healthyhomeopathy.com. Judith, do you use dowsing in homeopathy? I, I, I've heard of some people that do that. I wouldn't call it, no, I completely prescribe on the basis of an interview, and it's a, an interactive interview, but mostly I'm really allowing the case to unfold. We even call it case receiving instead of case taking. I've never heard of anybody using dowsing for homeopathy, but people do use machines uh, to prescribe homeopathic remedies. I That's not the way I do it, and uh, uh The way homeopathy was developed was one homeopathic remedy for the whole person gathered through a process of interview. And uh, it's it's quite an amazing process. In in fact, after the initial homeopathic interview, uh, the person is often amazed at how well understood he or she is. And then when I feed back to the person what I'm thinking and what my understanding is of that person, they're they're often uh, really amazed at how it the uh, the concept and the the homeopathic remedy integrate really everything about them and what their suffering is and and really as I've mentioned since a young child if I'm interviewing an adult trying to find the right remedy for them I will ask what they were like as children and usually there's a thread that runs through the entire case through through their entire lives. Maybe. This is, this sounds really really shamanic in nature because uh, my shamanic teachers would go live with their with their clients to discern the illness because they felt that it was if one person in the family was ill the whole family was ill and if one person was ill it probably started way back when and they would try and the 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 act of making somebody feel really thoroughly understood was part of the healing do you see it that way in homeopathy I think uh, I think that the substance is important to give the person. My teacher talks about every once in a while there will be what's called homeopsychotherapy, well, where you do explain to the person, this is my understanding, this is how I see you. And ever since uh, childhood, there was this pattern, and uh, sometimes that will have a profound effect on the person. And I have seen once or twice where the healing process begins even before they take the, the remedy. But uh, usually I'll give the remedy right then, and so uh, I like to have that that substance uh, to be acting (laughs) in addition to whatever is happening in the interview. So what is a miasm? I understand miasms are addressed a lot in homeopathy. A miasm is a hereditary layer of predisposition. And Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, who developed homeopathy, he said, well, it's one thing to cure people from what they're suffering from. But then there's, why is it that they keep getting ill over and over again? And he understood that it was because of an inherited predisposition. And back at that time, it might have been syphilis, it might have been tuberculosis. Now, of course, the the cancer miasm is really quite prevalent. And now, uh, thanks to my teacher, Dr. Rajan Sankaran from India, it's, uh, it's, it's possible for many years I didn't know how to really apply miasms day to day in my practice with people. And he developed a system whereby it's, we're always looking at miasms, we're always looking at the, how that particular set of symptoms or illness affects the person, whether it feels like life or death, whether they feel like they're at the end of their rope, whether they feel like they must do everything absolutely perfectly. That's what the cancer miasm is. They have to uh, to really make superhuman efforts in order to, uh, to have everything in their life go perfectly, and that, for example, is the cancer miasm. So it's an integral part. First, we... Uh, in in this system, first you look at the kingdoms. In other words, is that person an animal, a plant, or a mineral? And in other words, do they need a substance from the animal, plant, or mineral kingdom? Animals are about survival. They're about territoriality. They're about victim aggressor. I, I saw someone yesterday who I gave with bipolar disorder who fit a snake remedy, uh, revenge, betrayal, etc. Uh, plants are very sensitive, like that child 
yesterday who her teeth were very sensitive. She was sensitive to clothing. They're very reactive, just like plants are. And minerals are down to earth. Minerals are about um, structure and performance and security. And uh, if you have somebody who's a, a bookkeeper, for example, an accountant, uh, buy the book kind of person, they're likely to need a mineral. But but then there's a system because there's over 3,000 remedies. Yeah, so there needs to be a system with that, right? Yeah, it's all yeah. very and but but what's so exciting for me is every case is new, every person is new, and it's like putting together the pieces of a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Somehow I know it's going to come together in most most of the time. And when it comes together, it's it's just it's amazing. It's well, there's it's, there's the magic, right? Yeah, I was going to say it's almost like magic, but it's a a very systematized magic. So where do miasms come from? They're hereditary. In other words, uh, if you go back in our ancestors, uh, for example, my mom had TB. And the characteristics of someone who uh, has what's called a tubercular miasm, they live as though every minute might be the last. They love to travel. They're really kind of uh, go-get-it people. They they love to meet people. And uh, I'm a classic uh, uh, tubercular miasm person. I live on two continents and... I uh, love to meet people from different places, try different foods. Uh, I'm a go-for-it so, kind of person, and that's it, tubercular miasm. Is it passed down through the DNA? I don't know that it's passed down through the DNA. That's a really good question, but uh, it is passed down <laughs> in some <laughs> I, form or another. It's, it's a good question about the DNA. Does it? Do you work with past lives? Does it relate to past lives? Uh, I used to do uh, that kind of work. I used to do a lot of hypnosis. I used to do past life therapy. I don't do that anymore. But uh, I don't, so I don't see a connection between that that and homeopathy. Okay, but but, you know, but I appreciate I appreciate there's all different levels of working with people. But no, I don't I don't combine those. And even when I did that kind of work, I didn't I didn't really mix them. Interesting. So, but uh, do you think that frequency has something to do with whether or not we break out with the illness that uh, is our predisposition, that is our miasm? You mean energetic frequency? Yeah, like our health, our general health. You know, yeah, say, of for course. Instance, say for instance, if if you're eating canned beans rather than fresh beans, there's not much energy in there, and sometimes it takes yeah. more energy to digest what you're eating than what you're getting out of it, and eventually your frequency drops to a point that you break out in illness. Yeah, of course. And okay. and that's why I say eventually I think they will figure out how homeopathy works. And I think it will have to do with energetic frequency, uh, without a doubt. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a substance, a treatment, that matches the energetic frequency of that individual. And maybe someday, maybe we won't even need all this interview, although I, I it's really, um, I love to do it. But maybe they'll just, they'll, someone will stand there and there'll be a way to just match that frequency. I don't think there's anything sophisticated enough with any machine now <coughs> to do it the way I'm talking about. You know, there are machines that supposedly match the frequency and then they, <clears throat> they give a variety of different remedies. But I'm talking about finding the one single remedy whose frequency matches. And I think that will be possible in the future. You know, Judith, I've seen people use machines to create uh, what they call a homeopathic remedy. What is that? What's going on there? Oh, you're probably asking the wrong person. In other words, what I, what, what my husband and I both say, I don't believe that's homeopathy. I believe it's using homeopathic remedies, homeopathic substances, in a different way from which they were meant. And uh, so they definitely use uh, remedies and they get results and they often use a combination of many, many remedies. But that wasn't the idea of homeopathy. Homeopathy is one particular substance from nature fits the whole person. And for me, how much more fascinating than to find out that somebody needs diamond or dolphin's milk or wasp or starfish or uh, whatever it might be uh, to me, that's the elegance and the beauty of homeopathy. So, so it, giving people, you know, using a machine, which uh, some people do with effectiveness, that's not my style of homeopathy. It sounds like um, 
again, it's a, a matter of mastery because a machine can't do the interview. And if you have to reduce it down to one instead of the shotgun effect, that's going to take a certain level of mastery, isn't it? It is. <laughs> and homeopathy done that way is, is not for everyone. It, it requires, um, I think, a great curiosity. Uh, for me, it's like I said, it's like a puzzle I'm trying to solve. And it's, that's why I'm so passionate about it, because even after 33 years, every single person who comes to, you know, for my help, they're unique, they're different, and that's why there's so many substances. And now there's 3,500, but there's more and more substances being proven all the time, because it can be anything from nature. And for me, isn't, isn't that fascinating? Hmm. You know, it. When I, as I listen to you, it sounds like you use esoteric skills um, in your interview. Are you aware of doing that? Do you know that you do that? <sighs> esoteric skills. Well, like as I, in being it, empathic, or yeah, esoteric. of course, and and intuitive, and but a lot of it is just being open, trusting that the remedy will present itself, that the person will that it will, it will evolve, and. You know, yes, intuition, but but really, uh, five homeopaths who are really skilled in this method should uh, really come up with the same remedy for that person. Doesn't always happen, <laughs> but um, if they're using the same method, that should happen. The Do you believe that the um, the homeopathic remedy has a spirit of its own? Oh boy, that's a really good question. Uh, you mean like spirit medicine? Yeah, I mean that's where this all originated. Really, if we go back far enough, the shaman would uh, communicate, <laughs> as, as shaman do, with the plant to find what the plant offered and then what the person needed. Sounds pretty similar in a way. Well, I think I think really what's different, uh, you know, being a good homeopath uh, requires a lot of experience, but I think a lot of it is just being transparent. You know, with a shaman, there's highly developed skills that often take years and require great spiritual concentration. And I've, you know, consulted a shaman before. And we live in South America half the time. But honestly, that's why it's called case-taking, because I think that it's true that that there's a method, you know, a very well-developed method, but I'm just trying to receive. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to guide my patient to share with me. And it's really a lot of times feeding back to that person the last thing that they said to get them to open, open, open. And so I think it is, I think it really is different from shamanism. Mm, reflective listening. We're going to need to take another break. We'll pick up with this on the other side of this short break, so don't leave us now. This is the Science of Magic, your resource to altruistic professionals of science and the esoteric, working to create common ground for the betterment of our world. Join our email family to receive our amazing topic-driven episode collections at thescienceofmagic.net. If you have any suggestions for topics, please email me, info at thescienceofmagic.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. 
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. What's up in your world? Email me at info at thescienceofmagic.net and suggest a topic that's on your mind. You're probably not the only one interested. Our guest this hour is naturopathic physician, Dr. Judith reichenberg Ullman. Her website, healthyhomeopathy.com. Judith, your latest book was on um, uh, women in homeopathy, and I find that pretty fascinating. You know, women have, you know, we're, we're cyclic beings and emotional beings. How can homeopathy help us find balance? Well, it's not my latest book, but it's uh, one of my favorite books, and uh one thing that that I really want to mention, I think that homeopathy for women is just uh, perfect because women are receptive, they're intuitive, they gravitate towards what makes sense, what's natural, and uh, and I, I really want to point out, uh, homeopathy may seem you know uh, a bit woo woo to some people, but it's very concrete as well. I mean, we're talking about helping women with endometriosis with uh, uterine fibroids, with bladder infections, with arthritis, with psoriasis, as well as treating 
babies, as well as treating women for morning sickness and during pregnancy, as well as depression and anxiety. So I really want to make it clear that some people think, oh, but that's a physical problem. It does not matter. We're talking about treating the whole person. And so, uh, so for me, many of the different conditions that women have, I really suggest try homeopathy first, uh, whether it's vaginitis, whether it's the flu, whether, you know, whatever it may be. You know, this <laughs> prompts something interesting. We were talking earlier about how um, chamomile was being taken by this um, child's mother when she was pregnant. Um, if you have a pregnant woman and you're treating her with homeopathy, what effect does that have on the unborn child? Well, it's not uh, what you're taking, it's true, but also the emotional state, the mental and emotional state that the mother and the father have brought throughout their whole lives to the pregnancy, that can have an integral effect on the baby. And that's why we always say the best thing you can do for your baby, if you haven't been treated homeopathically before the pregnancy, at least while you're pregnant, be treated. And I do want to say the chamomile example that I gave. It's not that you shouldn't drink chamomile, chamomile tea during pregnancy. It's that this woman had drunk it for years, and for some reason it set up a you know a reaction and uh, and created a state a chamomile state I've never seen that before you know that's very very unusual but uh, it, yes the the healthiest thing you can do for your baby you know is to balance yourself and always including homeopathy during the pregnancy or even before you ever plan to get pregnant. Do you believe, personally, that by treating with homeopathy before and during the pregnancy, you can mitigate some of the natural miasms that might be passed down? Oh, that I definitely agree. You know, whether it can have an effect on the genes, that's a whole other question. But whether it can have a miasmatic effect, absolutely. That's one of the, definitely one of the reasons to do it. Do you have to focus on do you have to focus on that in your interview, that that's what you're looking for specifically is to find the miasmas that might be passed down and mitigate them? No, that's a really good question. Many, many years ago, uh, we sat in when we were in Mexico with a, a famous homeopathic, a Mexican homeopath named Ortega, and it was a totally different way of taking a case. And his students, who were there as well, they made notes. They made little checks for every single symptom about what miasm, and then they added it up at the end. This is much, much easier. The miasm is the hereditary layer of predisposition, but it's also the pace at which the illness uh, or the imbalance moves and how someone copes with their illness. So what I was talking earlier, whether it feels like life or death, whether they have to hide themselves because they feel like a leper, whether they feel like um, they just have to run at life because uh, life may not be around tomorrow, whether they have to organize every single thing in a perfectionist cancer way. So it's a different way of assessing miasms, and that's why it's opened up the whole miasmatic world to me to do this method because I didn't know really, when I started, I didn't know how to use miasms. We talked about them, but they they weren't integrated. Now it's just, uh, you know, very, very much a part of the case-taking in a very graceful, natural way. Do you consider miasms to be a spiritual component of illness? Now, when I'm talking spiritual, I'm talking about frequency at, say, the quantum level. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, probably, (laughs) probably. I mean, they're part, you know, they're part of the, uh, the energetic makeup that we bring when we come into this world and it can go back generations. So there we've gone full circle. You, we started saying it treats the physical, emotional, and mental, but now we're looking at a spiritual form of treatment as well. I'm always careful. As you mentioned, I've been involved in heavily in spiritual activities since my 20s. I don't use the word spiritual because I, for one thing, I don't want to put people off. We attract many, many different kinds of people in our practice. Um, uh, But I I can definitely say it treats the whole person. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. And again, we're dancing between spiritual and religious, yes? Yeah, definitely, for sure. And uh, and, uh, homeopathy is, is... is quite popular among very 
religiously conservative people as well. And so years ago, we were considered the New Age docs in Seattle. We started the first holistic clinic in Seattle, and um, and we were doing hypnosis and that kind of thing. But we intentionally uh made ourselves uh a little bit more a little bit more broad because we want to be able to appeal to everyone regardless of their beliefs uh and uh because everyone can benefit most people can benefit from homeopathy yeah it's not a belief system is it mm, it's not it's <laughs> not <laughs> can 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 homeopathy, you know, let's talk about menopause. Isn't that a lovely subject? Can can homeopathy help a woman move more gracefully through menopause? Oh, absolutely. Um I have one patient who uh saw me years ago and uh and she was having different kinds of uh, hormonal issues with her periods and then she came back last year because of menopause because of hot flashes because she was having irritability, you know, she was having this, this series of symptoms associated with menopause. And she needed the same remedy. Actually, she needed or a common homeopathic remedy for women called sepia, which is made from a cuttlefish or a squid. And it's for women who uh, often it, the imbalance can come at times of hormonal change, uh, such as after, during pregnancy, after pregnancy, menopause. But there's a loss of uh, libido, and the the woman would much rather exercise like crazy than uh than to think of think or do anything sexual and uh, and then there's a whole series of symptoms that arise and she it was it's like night and day with her and she picked up right after you know right where she left off not having seen me in i don't know 12 years or something like that same there's- remedy you know, hormones seem very uh, like complex issues, and there's you've indicated there's certain things that we can self treat. Do you, does a hormone treatment and trying to you know treat something that complex? Would you recommend seeing a, a professional rather than trying to take care of it yourself? You know, it's really uh, a differentiation between something that's an acute illness, short lived, first aid, or acute. I have a cold. You know, I've had a fever for a few days. I've had diarrhea for, you know, I have giardia. It doesn't matter what it's called. It's how long you've had the condition. Once it becomes chronic, once it's something that you had for for several months, and then it becomes what's called constitutional, where you really need to look at the whole person. So I would do it like that. If this is a recurrent or an ongoing problem, see a homeopath. Unless you're very, very lucky, the chances of of a woman or a person choosing that right remedy out of that 3,000 plus is not very high. You may be lucky. It may be just textbook, but I'd say do yourself a favor. Save yourself a lot of time and money and find somebody who really has experience. Yeah, because it, right now it seems like you can go into any health food store and they'll have this little rack of all these little homeopathic remedies and a, an idea, you know, next vomita. Okay, if, you, if you're going to throw up, this is what you want to take. How how useful is that ultimately? It's very useful for acute conditions. Our book, Homeopathic Self Care, sold thirty thousand copies. There are people who have raised their kids on that book. And if it's an acute condition, by all means use our book or a book like that. Get a kit and if you're traveling, uh for example, we wrote a little travel book. We have an app called Natural Travel Doctor, by the way. But by all means, it's incredibly useful if you have an acute illness. And we spell it out. One, two, three. This is what you do. We almost called the book <laughs> One, Two, Three Homeopathy, but we didn't. <laughs> we called it Homeopathic <laughs> Self Care. But please. We have a. Yeah. Yes. You, you, it's, amazed. it's amazing how much you will help yourself, others, but it has to be an acute, short-lived, or first-aid condition. We have just a few seconds left. What do you see as the future of homeopathy? I hope that homeopathy spreads, uh, you know, continues to spread far and wide. Homeopathy is under siege right now. In many places of the world, there's a lot of people who see it as a competition and there's uh, false rumors that are being spread that homeopathy is dangerous. It is not dangerous. It is the people's medicine to a large degree. And, well, you know, uh, time flies, Judith, and we are out of it. Thank you so okay. much for joining us on the show. 
Our guest this hour has been licensed naturopathic physician and author of The Whole Woman Homeopathy, Dr. Judith Reichenberg Ullman. Her website, healthywomanhomeopathy.com. This has been the science healthy, of magic. Healthy, healthy so, Thank you. This has been the science of magic. Join our email family to be the first to receive our thought-provoking, topic-driven episodes at thescienceofmagic.net. Until next time, dear ones, may you be blessed with knowledge and comforted with love as you consider all options. <laughs>